How can we start enjoying modern art? Well, Gompertz gives straightforward advice we can stop judging it as good or bad. Then we can try to understand how the history of art arrived, from the Renaissance made Mona Lisa to Balloon Dog, which sold for an insane price. Art is subjective, what appeals to you doesn't make sense to someone else. This summary's main idea is that any art movement and any ism was contemporary when it appeared. Why? Because political situations, social conditions, scientific discoveries, and technological progress always influence creative minds painters, writers, poets, and intellectuals, and they, in turn, impact art. Modernism's constant quest to find a single, all-encompassing solution to humanity's problems was considered to be silly, naive and delusional by the postmodernists, Will Gompertz. The artist's role is simple, reflect on life and make commentary through art music, paintings, and drawings. The true nature of art doesn't change, but art expressions differ from generation to generation. The following sections focus on seven art movements, their origins, and underlying ideas. Impressionism, Post-Impressionism, Primitivism, Cubism, Abstract Art including Suprematism and Neo, Plasticism, Dadaism, Surrealism. You will learn historical facts that have formed art movements and realize that every new idea is based on something already known. And from this point of view, the history of art becomes logical and leads us to modern galleries. Why is it important to learn? We live in an age of art. In the last 30 years, the art industry has made and sold more pieces than ever before. Museums have become places where everyone can find some entertainment from an academic to a small child. We can even see art on the streets. Thus, we don't need to visit a museum to bring it into our lives. We are already a part of the art process. Let's see where it started and how it is going. Impressionism, the movement and its background. On April 15, 1874, an exhibition would change art history opened, giving birth to the new art movement, Impressionism. The main participants of the exhibitions were Claude Monet, Pierre-Auguste Renoir, Camille Pissarro, Alfred Sisley, Berth Morizou, Paul Cham, and Edgar Degas. Their work diverged from the polished, classical oil paintings and academic art of previous centuries which focused on mythology, religious iconography, history, or ancient antiquity in idealized forms. These innovative artists rejected the traditional standards, forging their own paths. The elements that made Impressionism famous were bright colors and a crude way of painting. The modern bourgeois subject. The idea of reproducing the light effects the painters saw and prioritizing light over any pictorial detail preferring to work in the open air. The movement became possible because of technical and social innovations. Most notable is that there were no portable oil paint containers until the 1840s, so artists could only afford to work from their studios. The problem was solved when small color cone tubs were invented. On the other hand, the French Revolution created a new social class known as the bourgeoisie, and these up-and-coming people wanted a different sort of art. Impressionism reflected the existence of the new middle class living in big cities. They wanted smaller pictures that could fit on walls and show their way of living. The movement was inspired by the following, Art of Eugene de la Croix 1798-1863. He used quick, energetic brushstrokes with a mixed, pure color pigments to catch the moment's mood. His most famous works, like Liberty Leading the People, describe contemporary subjects. Art of Gustave Courbet 1819-1877. His realism described a non-idealized truth about ordinary life. Art of Edouard Monet 1832-1883. Monet, a pre-impressionist artist, mixed classical allegories and contemporary subjects in his paintings. He's famous for his Olympia and the Luncheon on the Grass paintings. Yukioi Masters Yukioi is a genre of Japanese art focused mainly on woodblock prints. The pieces reached Europe in the mid-1850s after Japan started exporting art. 
Post-Impressionism, the discovery of the visual language of the imagination. Post-Impressionism is a term invented by Roger Fry to introduce a group of painters who took Monet's ideas, as Impressionists did, but transformed them differently. One of those artists, Vincent van Gogh 1853-1890, his art is as famous as his life story. But while alive, he was unknown even in the art community. Nevertheless, after he died in 1890, his paintings immediately influenced modern art. Van Gogh continued what the Impressionists started with the new style of applying paint. If you look closely at his brushstrokes, you can see that his paintings are like sculptures on canvas. Unlike the Impressionists, Van Gogh didn't want to depict reality. Instead, he tried to express how he felt about what he saw. Call Gauguin 1848-1903 Gauguin started by collecting Impressionist art and eventually became a painter. He chose colors for symbolic and decorative purposes, and his painting style is closer to modern design than the classical art of the 19th century. Gauguin brought art back to the realm of imagination by using a contour line as a narrative device to separate the things he saw from his fantasy while mixing them in one painting. George's Sierra 1859-1891 This artist wanted to take the best from the Impressionists' ideas and give them structure and solidity. He invented the pointillist technique using multiple distinct dots of pure color pigments. Nowadays, we are not surprised to see a picture made from small colorful pieces. However, in the 19th century, it was an extremely new idea. Paul says in 1839 to 1906, this artist spent 40 years in self-isolation, a long time before coronavirus made isolating mainstream. He liked to choose static objects to make them the subjects of his art. The main idea was to show that humans look at the world with both eyes. So Cezanne, in his paintings, wanted to represent how we see things from two different angles simultaneously. Lately, his idea of binocular vision led to cubism and modernism. Did you know one version of Cezanne's The Card Players sold in 2011 for more than $250 million? This painting became a new mark for the highest ever price for a painting, not surpassed until November 2017 by Leonardo Salvatore Mundi. Primitivism and Cubism – Back to Basics Policy In the 20th century, the art of uncivilized tribes of Africa, South America, and Australia became popular in Europe. France had established a colony in Africa, and many travelers brought artifacts, household items, statues, and figurines to Europe. The art of naive, unspoiled cultures inspired modern artists to create new styles. They romanticized the traditional art of colonized lands because those cultures were not spoiled by materialism, still had access to the inner child, and could create innocent, truthful works. Thanks to the discovery of naive culture's art, the European art movement appreciated contemporary artists without artistic education and recognized them as talented painters. The first movement that reacted to these processes was Fauvism. Maurice de Vlaminck, Henri Matisse, and Anna de Rain wanted to explore the same primal feelings, thoughts, and intentions they felt in African masks. They used bright color block combinations to show it artistically, which seemed vulgar and garish to modern art critics. Fascinated by the naive art of distant cultures, artists also began to notice primitivism artists. The most famous example is Henri Rousseau, a simple, poorly educated Frenchman who worked as a tax collector and made artworks as a hobby. In 1886, he participated in an open exhibition where the Parisian artistic community noticed him. His fantasy, sincerity, and spontaneity melted the hearts of modern creators, and Rousseau became a hero to them. For example, Picasso bought Rousseau's painting and kept it with him for the rest of his life. Pablo Picasso and George's Rock were the main Cubism movement initiators. They were also impressed by the popular naive art and expanded the ideas of Cezanne in their paintings. Cubism became an art where an artist simultaneously depicts an object from every conceivable angle. 
In 1905, Albert Einstein presented his theory of relativity. As the theory of colors influenced Surat's art, the idea of the relative nature of time and space significantly impacted Picasso's and Braque's paintings. They started to depict what could be seen and what is known to exist, but not immediately visible. For the first time in history, art was no longer a simulation of reality. It became an object itself. Did you know Picasso famously stated that he spent for years honing his painting skills until he could emulate Raphael, but a lifetime perfecting his ability to paint like a kid. Abstract art, a painting as an object itself. Abstract art was influenced by modern science and discoveries, as were all the movements discussed in this summary. For example, Robert Delaunay was impressed by the book of French chemist Michel Yun Chevreul, published in 1839, which demonstrated how colors influence each other. As a result, Delaunay made color the main subject of his paintings. But it wasn't just science that influenced abstract art. Music was an abstract art form for centuries. Moreover, it has no subject or allusions to the surrounding world, and listeners are free to find their senses and associations. So the visual art of the 20th century tried to do the same using simple forms and colors. Art is always to an extent about trying to create order out of chaos, Will Gompertz. Yet, there also was a kind of abstract art that had nothing in common with music. Instead, this movement focused on the physical properties of the work itself, color, tone, weight, texture, space, and composition. It was a real break from tradition, but a logical continuation of art history. And yes, it was Kazimir Malevich's piece, Black Square. Malevich called his new form of pure abstract art suprematism. His paintings consisted of flat geometric shapes on a white background, with each part in one pure color. Suprematism challenged the viewer to study the painting instead of seeing it to think about balance, enjoy the textures, and analyze the color. This type of art was an experiment. Even when the artist left nothing to see, we are still trying to rationalize it. Every art piece communicates a message and is open to subjective interpretation. It is important to note that Malevich's suprematism and another conception of abstract art the neoplasticism of Piet Mondrian were a reaction to the world's social and political processes. Malevich created his abstract art conception in response to revolutionary Russia and Mondrian's art came from his experience of the First World War. The Dutch painter wanted to help society start a new life with the new idea of unity. Therefore, in his art, he tried to express the concept of ordinary things he believed should no longer be divided. Do you know, in January 1911, Vasily Kandinsky, one of the most famous abstract art pioneers, created his painting Impression 3 concert after visiting a concert by Viennese composer Arnold Schoenberg. Dadaism and Surrealism, Art After the War Dadaism emerged as an art movement on July 14, 1916, initiated by a group of intellectuals, not all of whom were artists. Their goal was to destroy the established art world, which though shocking to us now, reflected the spirit of the time. Malevich, whom we discussed before, also wanted to end the history of art. Why so? The First World War showed the disconnect between the realities, reasons, logic, and regulations that should rule the world. So, the proponents believe the Dada movement, with its unconventional philosophy, may provide a viable alternative. The simultaneity Dadaists practiced was a symbolic act, alluding to the fact that soldiers of various nations fighting on opposing sides, died together in the same area at the same time. And they had only the horrible war of war to accompany them on their fatal trip. Let's talk about the project MERS by Kurt Schwitters as an example of how this idea worked in art. The artist made hundreds of collages using fragments of trash. For him, it was considered a perfect metaphor for a broken world. It attempted to recreate reality and put everything back again after destruction. The ideas of Dada continued in the art of Marcel Duchamp. 
He called his work anti-retinol because it was a new kind of art that should stimulate the viewer's mind instead of their eyes. Dadaism was an art of ideas. For the first time in history, the visual aspect became less important than the artist's conception and the conditions in which it was made. In 1924, Dadaism became surrealism. The intellectual community of artists, poets, and writers was impressed by Sigmund Freud's psychoanalysis and his idea of the superior reality of dreams. From these ideas, the art of Salvador Dali was born. If we look at paintings of surrealists like Salvador Dali, Max Ernst, or Ren Magritte, we notice that they look pretty realistic. But the things constituting the plot of the painting are surreal. So their artworks tell us that life is an illusion, and the illusion can be more truthful than something we once called real. Conclusion Art was never a separate world. On the contrary, it was always connected to all processes of life. Impressionism appeared because the French Revolution created the bourgeoisie. Post-impressionism occurred because of scientific research about how colors and light impact the human eye. Primitivism became famous because Europe saw a lot of art objects from colonized lands. Cubism was a visual reflection of Albert Einstein's theories. Abstract art was born during the time of revolution and war. Dadaism was established by intellectual people trying to show the absurdity of the post-war mentality. Sigmund Freud's psychoanalysis heavily influenced surrealism. The same thing is going on right now. Contemporary artists, like mirrors, are reflecting the processes that formulate our modern world. Banksy dedicated a painting titled Painting for Saints or Game Changer to an HS staff during the global coronavirus pandemic in May 2020. The most famous Chinese artist, A.I. Weiwei, made the art project remembering to honor over 80,000 school children who perished in the May 2008 Sichuan earthquake. Marina Abramovic created her performance Balkan Baroque as a response to the war in Bosnia. Art is a part of every culture, and culture is a part of everyday life. The art created nowadays will be divided into movements, styles, and periods. It will be structured and explained some centuries later. So for now, we can relax and feel it with our associations and emotions. Try this. Visit a museum of modern art and try to search for the connection between the artwork and our reality. Have a look at the artworks mentioned in this summary. May the progression of modern art history persist.